Hello, welcome to the next episode of my vlog. This one's called Set Free to Connect. So I already ran through this once on Instagram, but my speaker wasn't working on here. That's just extra information that you don't even really need to know about. Some other extra information. I'm so sorry I missed last week, but I am not sorry because of the fact that I was in Arizona and I want to give a shout out to my friend Charity and Trevin and then my sons, Caleb and Josiah. We had the wonderful, wonderful opportunity, as Charity says, to get hit with the Foyt train. Uh, we participated in a worship uh, event. We saw, oh my goodness, we saw people saved we saw people set free from drug addictions that had been in place for them for years, like 20 years. Saw a lady who had been in a wheelchair who I think, again, for 20 years, she had never stood up and she stood up. We saw people that were deaf that began to hear. It was incredible. And I really loved the connection that was there as the body of Christ. We gathered with people from other states. It was actually in Arizona, so a lot of Arizonians there, beautiful people just gathering together in unity um, as the body of Christ, just worshiping God. The sole purpose was to worship God and to just shift the atmosphere where we were at. And I'm telling you, it was amazing. Something ignited in me. I felt some elements of hopelessness and that lack of connection dissipate. And I felt my soul come alive as I was joining with other believers in complete joy and freedom and just seeing the awakening and the revival happening in people's hearts. So connection. This episode is called Set Free to Connect. And I actually had prepared this a couple of weeks ago. It was just, again, um, I don't go into the, my meditation time with the Lord specifically trying to get something for these, but I come here and I share these things with you to help me process and cement it in me. And, and I feel like he always gives me something amazing and beautiful. So before we even went on this event, the Lord really spoke to me about connection. And so, um, one of the people at another Sean Floyd event talked about how we have had the most, um, overdoses, drug overdoses in a 12 month period ever in American history. Just recently, people are literally dying in isolation and fear right now. The lack of connection is having dire effects on us. That was a study, I guess, by PBS, or they produced an article based on that. People are dying in isolation. It is from the pit of hell. We are wired for connection. God created us in his image. He had angels. He could have done anything. And he wanted to create man in his image to display his glory and for connection. He used to connect with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And he moved all of heaven and earth. And we are in this realm that we're in um, as God waits it out for the most souls to receive him even though there are bad things happening that he's not causing. He cares about every soul and wishes that no one will perish because he wants connection and we're created for connection. He tells us over and over that we need to come together in unity through the bond of peace, different as we are. And you know what? There's no perfect relationship. There's no perfect person. There's no perfect institution. There's no perfect anything. So there's going to be flaws. There's going to be hurts. There's going to be that. But our need and our wiring deep inside of us for connection remains. And so I actually was walking through this meditation time. Again, it was a soul time meditation. And uh, they had us ask the question, Lord, when did I first feel connection? And so immediately when this happened, I was brought to a memory of my grandma. So I happened to be in a car where there were three a connected seats. So my grandpa was on the right. He was driving. I was in the middle. My grandmother was on the um, right side. No, my grandfather was on the left, the other right. And then I was in the middle. My grandmother was on my right. And I think we had done some landscaping that day and I was extremely exhausted because my grandfather was an architect, built homes. So I was like, 
I'm just going to lay in my grandma's chest. And I used to do this often, but this has always, this memory has always set with me. And obviously God brought me back to this memory. She was well endowed. <laughs> so it was like pillows to me. And so I laid on her and I just fell asleep. It was so beautiful, so natural, so comforting, so satisfying, so needed, so beautiful. And I felt connected to her. And so in that, the next question was, um, where was God? And I just felt God all over me, covering me like a blanket, sheltering me. You know, the Bible talks about that God is like a mother hen. He gathers us together and he covers us. And Psalm 91 talks about that he covers us with the shadow of his wing. And so I felt that. I felt him all around. And it was such a beautiful place to be, like the epitome of connection and comfort. And so um, then I was asked, you know, to say, you know, like, what are the truths? I started thinking about what are the truths that God would want me to know about this? And so um, there were five that I really honed in on. The first one was that it's possible. It's actually natural. It's part of our nature to want to connect. It's like I said, how we're wired. It's how we were created. And so it's natural. It's possible. Even when it feels impossible, even when there are things coming at us from the outside, or maybe we have walls on the inside, it's possible for us to connect. It's actually natural for us to connect. And there's always the potential and the availability for connection. The second thing is he's in it. Like he was there with me. In that memory, I felt him. He was so there with me, covering me. And I felt his presence and the love and the goodness of God, which he is a good father that only gives good gifts. The third thing was, it is so satisfying. That's one of the truths I picked up. It is so satisfying to be connected and it's actually needed. In that satisfaction, there's growth. There are things that come alive. There's a watering of the soul that happens and stuff starts to, the seeds start to push through and the things that are hidden start to come to light because there's safety, there's shelter, there's comfort, there's rest, there's satisfaction, and it's needed. The fourth thing was rest. I felt so rest. When connection is done right, it should feel like rest. God has been punished for us. He did the performing for us. He does it for us. We don't have to work. We do things because we love him, but there's rest that comes forth in that place of connection when it's done right. And then fifth, it is worth the risk. It is worth the risk. So at this point, I started to evaluate, whoa, I do feel risk associated with this. Why do I feel this? What fears do I have with connection? So I really started to ask God about that. It is very risky to put yourself out there because you are opening your heart. You are becoming vulnerable in that connection to loss. And I've experienced my share of loss, whether it's through a person dying, like my grandmother's no longer here, or it's a place of You've been hurt. You have a conflict. And sometimes redemption comes back around. I've had redemption come back around. There's been breaches and then we connect. There have been other situations in which that connection is broken and it never comes back around. Sometimes it needed to never come back around and it's still painful. And then sometimes it should, but it doesn't because there's just a fence on either side that prevents the connection again. And so those fears would be things that were coming up for me and that God was highlighting for me to hand over. And so I went to the next step and I wanted to exchange this fear and ask God, what do you have for me in place of this fear? So I'm somebody who sees things a lot. I see things in pictures. And, um, and so I saw myself handing over to Jesus the crown of thorns that he already took upon himself, the thorns that would stick in my mind and they would torment me mentally with fear and would keep me from taking that step of connection. Jesus took that. He took those thorns on his head so that I don't have to, 
So that's what I saw myself. I saw myself turning over the fear. And the beautiful thing is when I asked Jesus, what do you have for me in exchange? He gave me a beautiful crown, a crown I don't deserve, but he nonetheless crowned me and gave me that crown of righteousness that he died for, that he took the thorns for so that I can stand in his righteousness, his protection and walk into connection, even with risk. So I want to encourage you to uh, maybe walk through those steps yourself. I'm going to encourage you to, at some point soon, ask God when the first time was that you felt connection and see if a memory comes up. And if a memory doesn't come up, then that's okay. Just ask God about that. Talk to him about it. He wants to converse with you. He wants to connect with you so much. And so just talk to him about that. Ask him. You know, why don't I have a memory of that? Or what does that mean? Or does that mean anything? Or what would you want me to know about that, Jesus? And see what he says. If you do have a memory, then just ask God, where were you when that was happening? When I felt that connection? And then ask him, what truths do you want to show me about that memory or about that connection? And then ask God, what fears? Are there any fears that I have with connection? or anything that are coming up for me in this time, in this moment, um, that I'm thinking about this memory. And then take the opportunity to exchange those fears for whatever he has for you. Say, Jesus, what do you have to give me in return for these fears that I'm handing over to you? And then I want to challenge you because action steps help me again cement things inside of me. So I'm going to suggest to you, if you're willing, if this is something you want to dive into, and I just want to remind you that connection is not only good for our souls and our spirits, but it is so good for our immune systems. There are studies. Go look them up. I know you can find a study for anything, but there are bona fide studies that show that lacks of connection actually tear down the immune system. And that connection actually builds up your immune system. It fortifies it. And so connection is important. So I would encourage you to dive into this, that you would be set free to connect. So two action steps. It's one action step, two parts. I'm going to encourage you to put yourself out there to contact two people this week. One person that you have an established relationship with and one person that you kind of really want to get to know, but you haven't made that step. Contact them and start walking towards connection with them. And if it ends up being something that isn't healthy, that's okay. You learned that. Try again with somebody else. So I want to encourage you to do those things. And I just want to pray over you real quick. God, I just thank you for my brother, for my sister, for my friend that is processing with me and taking their time to listen to this. And I, I pray that these words penetrate their souls and that it builds them up and encourages them, infuses them with hope, God, and helps them understand some of the way that they're wired, some of how you've wired. I pray that this causes greater connection with you and greater connection with other people. God, I ask that as they walk through some of these steps that you reveal things to them that they didn't know. And I pray that you would bless them, that you would keep them. I pray that you would cover them, that they would move from a place of rest and from a place of connection with you to a place of connection and rest with others around them. God, I pray against all isolation and things that would tear us down mentally, physically, and spiritually. And I pray for connection and unity and gathering in the body of Christ, unity with diversity, God. I thank you, God, for the goodness that you have in store for us in every season. And for anyone who is hurting or for who is struggling with coping mechanisms because of a lack of connection, I pray that you free them of that, God, and that they find what they need in you. You are the only one who truly satisfies. And it just requires us calling out to you, saying, Jesus, I need you. I can't do this myself. I want to stand in what you've already done for me. God, we love you. We thank you that you only 
have good thoughts towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to be back next week, hopefully. I have a special surprise. You won't be just looking at my face. There'll be somebody here who is going to process some things with us. That uh, Anyway, it's a surprise. I don't want to give it all away. But bless you. Be set free.